Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly Pop Culture Wrap-Up. That's right, everybody. Welcome here to Pop Culture Philosophers. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it is time for the weekly Pop Culture Wrap-Up. It is the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies, Let's get right into it. Official solicitations for Superman Year One are out. I know a lot of people were maybe thinking that maybe DC Black Label was just not going to happen, that it was going to fizzle out after Damned. No, not the case. We got Last Night on Earth already solicited. Now we've got the official solicitations for Superman Year One, a look at the first year of Superman, written by Frank Miller with artwork by John Romita Jr. It's going to debut June 19th. We've got the covers. Um, we're still excited here at PCP. Very intriguing to see what Frank Miller is going to do with the character. As I've said before, Frank Miller always has more of a, a dire, dark approach towards his books. Um, obviously, with things like Sin City, Year One, Dark Knight Returns and such, 300, whatnot, continues on, right? Um, Superman doesn't seem to be right in Miller's, like, line. But maybe that's good. Maybe it's good for Miller to joke, go outside of that line. I really hope he does keep the hope, um, the optimism, the inherent goodness alive in Superman. But of course, we're also going to be talking about a young Superman. I'm really excited. I love John Romita Jr.'s artwork. I think he's one of the best sequential storytellers in the business over the last like 20, 30 years. Fantastic work. It's intriguing. It's intriguing, for sure. Absolutely. Silver Surfer Black has been announced by Marvel Comics. It's going to be written by Donny Cates with artwork by Trad Moore. It's a five-issue miniseries that's going to follow Silver Surfer's exploits into a black hole, which happened in recent issues of Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just a five-issue series, so all five issues should be done by Trad Moore. It's got a very stylized, over-the-top, hyper-violent, hyper-unusual, but hyper amazing style. I absolutely love his artwork. Um, you may be familiar with him from the Luther Strode books. You may be familiar with him from the, is it Luther Strange? It's Luther Strange, right? The Strange Talent, no, it's the Strange Talent of Luther Strode. I always get that. Anyway, and also he helped launch Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider book. I love his artwork. It's, it's abstract. It's weird. It's cool. It's dynamic. It's fire. It's fire. Donny Cates is on top of the world right now. Silver Surfer, five issues. Cates, and more. I'm 100% down for that. Second Coming, which was a book by Mark Russell and Richard Pace, which is going to focus on maybe a little bit of sacrilegious kind of ground. Obviously, we already know it got canceled by DC slash Vertigo Comics, but it has been picked up by Ahoy Comics, and it will be releasing later this year. It's the story about um, God sending Jesus down to earth to learn how to be a, a, an actual um, messiah, a, a good son, like what he more expects him to be from a Superman type character. I don't know. I'm really excited for this. I think religious satire is a relevant and needed topic to discuss in our fiction. Absolutely. I'm super pumped for this and I'm glad that Ahoy got a hold of it. Really cool stuff right there. Wolverine Exit Wounds is going to be a one-shot comic book in June from Marvel Comics. Why is it such a big deal? Because it's bringing back some longtime fan favorite cre uh, creators who have worked on the most badass mutant out there, Wolverine, right? Chris Claremont is going to be doing a story in it, for instance, with Salvador LaRocca doing the artwork, and then you got Larry Hama teaming up with Sam Keith to do a Wolverine story. Sam Keith has done a lot of work with the character. Larry Hama has done extensive work with the character, and of course, so has LaRocca and Claremont. Um, I'm really excited for this. It's really, really cool. One of my favorite things about the return of Wolverine is a return of that brown and tan costume, which to me is just the best. There's a one-shot uh, one for Incredible Hulk out that month as well, Last Call. It reunites Peter David and Del Keown. It's going to tell the final Hulk story, which I thought they already did in Hulk the End and Future Imperfect with George Perez. But whatever, right? Final Hulk story. Let's, let's let David, let's let Peter David get another stab at it, right? Let's do it. I'm down. I mean, Del Keown is a writer that's very much associated with the Incredible Hulk. A lot of people that grew up in the 90s, they kind of remember him. Um, and of course, Peter David had one of the longest and most endearing runs on the character ever. So that's really, really cool. Some sad news. Silencer is ending. 
the final, or the penultimate, I guess you could say, to final um, uh, New Age of Heroes book still standing. Now we still have Terrifics. Terrifics is going to be the last one standing. Silencer is going to end with June's issue number 18. Also talking about sad things, um, Brian Hitch is leaving Hawkman after issue 12. If you've been reading Hawkman, and it's really good, so if you haven't, you really should. Brian Hitch has been pumping out some of his career best work and absolutely doing it on time and doing it every single month. He has just redefined himself and, and, and reignited our, our love, loyalty, and hope for him, right? Then he's been doing amazing work on Hawkman with Robert Vendetti. He will be replaced by Will Conrad, who is an artist that maybe you may remember from Buffy and Angel and stuff like that. But 12 issues all Brian Hitch, big epic type stuff. That's awesome, but we got to make room for some new projects, including that often rumored, that very much often rumored lately, Warren Ellis Brian Hitch Batman run. Wouldn't that be something exceptional? That'd be really, really cool. I don't know if that's true, though, but I hope it's true. Absolutely. It'd also be nice to see him and Ellis relaunch the authority at the end of the Wildstorm because the Wildstorm is also going to wrap up in June. So be on the lookout for that. From IDW, we got Marilyn Manor was just announced at ECCC this week. Um, written by Magdalene Visaggio with artwork by Marley Zarconi. Um, um, her artwork you can see on Shade the Changing Girl. Do you remember that book from Young Animal? I liked it. I love the artwork especially. I'm a big fan of Magdalene Visaggio's uh, work. So I'm really pumped for this. The idea is it's set in like the 80s, I think 1981. They say it's like, what if John Hughes wrote an apocalyptic story? Something like that, right? Anyway, the title character is a is the is the first daughter, and when the president's out of town, she throws a crazy party, and then you add in some crazy weird fantasy sci-fi magic type stuff, and psh, there you go, right? I'm sold already by the creators involved. I'm really very much looking forward to that book. From Vault Comics, it's always good when we have a new announcement from our homies over at Vault. Vault Comics doing some of the absolute best science fiction and fantasy comic books. And just in general, some of the best sci-fi and fantasy stories I've read over the last five to ten years. Absolutely. I'm not even kidding. They're doing an amazing job. Um, Christopher Sabella and Jean, uh, Jen Hickman are going to be launching Test. Test seems really cool, very sleek. It's about someone who's kind of like, uh, I don't know, they're, they're kind of like allowing themselves to be experimented on for money and stuff like that. Um, this character, she's going to go to try to find, I think it's called Laurelwood, if I remember correctly. She's trying to find this like mystic land where they're testing the future, things that shouldn't even exist yet. Looks like it's going to be some really hard-edged sci-fi type stuff, really cool, crazy ideas. Sabella has done amazing works on books like Shanghai Red and especially Crowded. Crowd is one of my favorite books. I love it. Can't wait for it to return. And Jen Hickman, you may know recently as the artist on Moth and Whisper. So really cool team. Very excited to see what they're going to do. It's a vault comics. It's going to be groundbreaking. It's going to be different. It's going to be unique. It's going to be exceptional. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Movies and TV. James Gunn is back. James Gunn has been reinstated as the director on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. If you know me, if you know this channel, if you follow us, you know how excited I am. I am so, so excited. I, it tore me apart when he got taken, when he got fired from Guardians of the Galaxy. I was really, really sad. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies are some of my favorite in the MCU. I love both of those films. I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is like top three MCU films. Absolutely. Top three comic book films. I, I love that movie. I love it so much. And I'm so excited to have James Gunn back. Now, of course, he is still doing The Suicide Squad at DC. So it's kind of like Marvel and Disney. Marvel kind of had to convince Disney, like, yo, look, he's jumping over to DC. We need him back. We got to get him back. I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped. It's been in the works, apparently, for a few months. They've been slowly working it out. I am down for that. Now, of course, his the Suicide Squad, a lot of people are like, is it a sequel? Is it not? I don't know. They were talking about Idris Elba is apparently in, in talks to replace Will Smith as the title, I mean, as the character Deadshot. I'm down for that. Idris Elba, put him in every movie. I'm, we were talking about that at the panel this year at the Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo. Put Idris Elba in anything. We're cool. We're cool with that, that, those decisions, right? So him coming in as Deadshot, that could be neat. It's, it's rumored that Harley Quinn's going to be in it for a minute. Apparently Rick Flagg was in some of the early versions of the script, but has since been pulled out. Who really knows? But apparently none of the other characters from the first one are going to carry over. And they're even saying that this is like not uh, a sequel as much as it is kind of a reboot, right? It's kind of weird to reboot it so quickly. But, man, it's James Gunn. I'm all, I'm, I'm all excited. If you guys didn't know, I'm a huge James Gunn fan. Absolutely. Um, so I'm sold for that. But we were talking about the MCU, you know. 
So let's talk about that Avengers trailer. The Avengers Endgame trailer just announced, just released a new trailer this week. Um, I loved it. I thought it was the best one yet. It really got me pumped up. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, I'm watching this movie as soon as I can. I am pumped for this movie. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a tearjerker. I think it's going to be sad. Um, I, that trailer was very, very well done, though. Very, very well cut together. A little bit of a, showing a little bit of the past MCU and all the stuff that led into where we're going today. I loved it. I loved the coloring. I loved everything about it. But like my homie Manuel likes to say, um, don't trust everything you see in the MCU trailer because i got to point you out to the Infinity War trailer. We saw Hulk hulked out running and charging against Thanos' army with Cap and the other Avengers. That didn't happen in the movie. So don't be surprised if some of those characters that are in those new awesome like space suits or whatever that they're in, those red and white and black ones, um, don't be surprised if some of that's just misleading and some of those characters aren't really there. But I don't know, just speculation. I'm really pumped for this movie. Are you? Let me know what you think. And the Flash movie, the long, often delayed <laughs> Flash movie starring Ezra Miller, obviously. Unfortunately for Ezra Miller, he was in a movie that wasn't really, didn't, didn't get received too well with Justice League, right? I really liked Miller's uh, performance as The Flash. I liked the costume. I liked the way he moved. I liked the way it looked. I liked the effects. I was really kind of pumped to see more of this character uh, performed by this actor. I really, really am. I think that he was spot on. I really liked what he did with that, with that role. Um, but this Flash movie, you know, they were talking about doing a Flashpoint movie. I never thought that was a good idea at all. But apparently in a last ditch effort to stay on board as The Flash, Ezra Miller's decided he's gonna write it himself with the help of Grant Morrison. Now I've been wanting Grant Morrison to do like a five to eight year run on The Flash for a long time, but I'll take a movie co-written by him, absolutely. If anybody can nail this character, can nail the weirdness, can nail the cool sci-fi edgy aspects of it, time travel, light speed, all that kind of stuff, right? Grant Morrison, I am pumped. I really hope this is true. I really hope it works out. I really, really want to see a Flash movie co-written by Grant Morrison. That would be phenomenal. And if anything, at least it'll give him some cool ideas in case he ever does do that five to eight year run on Flash, right? Just imagine that. That would be mind blowing. That would be so, so cool. There was a new Aladdin trailer. It was really awesome, actually. Way better than the last trailer. I know a lot of people were all up in arms about the blue genie or whatever. I thought he looked fine. It looked like they kind of corrected some of the color. It looked like it didn't stand out so much. Also, of course, in the trailer, he wasn't always blue. Um, I really like this trailer. Sounds good. The music sounds good. Whole new world. Friend like me. Pfft. Aladdin's one of my absolute favorite Disney animated films, so I'm totally excited about this movie. I just wish we could get some kind of cool, like, you know, tie-in. I mean, you can get Will Smith doing another song, so that's cool, but I wish we could do something a little bit more like getting jiggy with it. You know, Wild Wild West, Men in Black. Um, some, so I hope we get a nice music video with a silly dance, right? I'm just kidding. I'm really pumped for this movie. I really am. There's a Gundam movie. I don't care. It's written by Brian K. Vaughn. That makes me care a little bit more. Not that I don't care about Gundam. Gundam's just not really my thing. My giant robots, I prefer Super Sentai. That's just me, right? I like things that shift and change and morph and whatnot. But it's really, really exciting to hear that a top tier level writer like that, Brian K. Vaughn, creator of Saga, creator of Why the Last Man, numerous other comic books, television writing, um, stuff like that. Really, really excited for this, especially for you fans of Gundam. You're really in for a treat. He knows the stuff. He knows how to tell a story. He knows how to craft. He knows structure. That's cool, and I would definitely check that out. It made me a little bit more interested in a Gundam movie, absolutely. So that's what we got for you this week. What do we got coming up here at PCP? Well, tonight is a live stream. That's right, Robbie Rance live tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. It's going to be a very special one because we just crossed 4,000 subscribers here on the YouTube channel, and we are going to celebrate by giving away a prize. So be sure to pay attention. Come on board tonight. Talk to us. It's going to be me. Maybe a special guest. Maybe a special guest or two. I don't know. It all depends on what actually happens. But we got something really special planned out for you. I'm going to be showing off a lot of the cool stuff I got at the recent Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo. Some Silver Hawk figures and crash test dummies and stuff like that. So be on the lookout for that tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, where you can get your first information on what the contest is going to be, how to win the prize, and what the prize is going to be. And trust me, it is something fantastic, is what I'm going to say. So be on the lookout for that. Tomorrow I got a review of Friendo number 5 coming out. It's the final issue of the series from Vault. It releases March 27th. My advanced review will be up tomorrow morning, Tuesday night. Weekly comic book review. 
Always excited to do that for you guys and share my thoughts on the week's upcoming comic books and lots more excitement coming this week here at Pop Culture Philosophers. Thank you so much for helping us get to 4,000 subscribers and beyond. Next contest is going to be at 5,000 subscribers. We're already gearing up for that one. So thank you guys so much for your support and everything else. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And join us at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on keeping on.